at the Google Hospital, we do CT scans and x-rays to see what's exactly going on. Okay? So, we'll take care of this turtle here, and then what we'll do is we'll cover them up. Because stress is very, very bad for people and for animals. We want to keep them nice and calm. So just keep them nice and calm like this, and then depending on what their issue is, we treat them and possibly put them in water for a while, keep them out. This way they stay nice and warm. Okay, we also try and keep the hands off as much as possible because we want them to release them back out of the water. Any questions? Now, does anybody have a pool? Those of you that have a pool know you have to scrub them down, right? We have 43 pools. How do we keep them all clean? If you come this way just so we have a walk in there. Yeah. We have all volunteer divers. Drive down to 400 hours a month of underwater time to keep all the pools clean. That's what all this equipment for is. We have some that come in the morning, some in the afternoon, and during the day we usually have a couple here to put on demonstrations or for things to fall in. Cameras, watches, small children, sunglasses to fall in to get them out. Okay? So the divers here, we are very, 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 very important to what we do here. If you want to volunteer as a diver, all we ask for is you have some certification, but also we just ask for twice a month. For regular volunteers, it's four hours a week. Okay, no expense necessary. Okay, now normally we'll come out this way, but there's lightning watch and it's raining. So we're going to go this way here. Uh, we're going to be going through some pump areas and then we're going to have to cross a little walkway for the We may be getting wet. I'm going to shoot you through to the other side, okay? That'll keep us out of the rain as much as possible, especially lightning. Remember here, we're the lightning capital of the world. So let me explain a little bit before we go in there about what happens over here. We filter 1.4 million gallons of seawater every day for our pools. Okay, we bring it in and we use it. Everybody uses this water except the otters. The otters are river otters, they use fresh water. So we'll bring this in, we clean it, and we use it. We are very, very proud of the fact that we have such a good way to clean the water. We have a government license. They let us put the water back. It's actually cleaner when we put it back in than when we bring it out. This is an estuary. It's very, very healthy water. So there's a mother dolphin that brings out her little baby. Uh, her name is Lonach and his name is Jake. Every morning to come and teach them how to hunt and they go back out and leave him again. So sometimes out here we'll have manatees, dolphins, sometimes sharks, things like that right here. Right now we're being very, very cautious because there's red tide in the area. It's south of us, but we're being very cautious because of course we do fill the 1.4 million gallons of it. Okay? Any questions? No? We're going to go through here. If on the other side, you can face a whole bunch more that people don't get to see. So maybe it's good that it's raining because it could just sweep you out over there. But over here, let me tell you a little bit more about some other things we have here. Over here, this is what we do we have for otters. Okay, right now, there's no otters in there, but every year we get 12 to 
we honor the people who are found in them and they want to act. And then they find out they fight those tracks, they smell like skunks, they don't want them anymore. So we try and rehab them. The cages go all the way to the top because they are escape artists. They can figure out ways to get out of things, okay? Um, but three months ago, we brought in one named Petunia. She was three weeks old, her eyes were still closed. We got her here, she, she was rehabbing, we got her at our other rehab facility. She's doing really, really well. So hopefully we'll be able to release her, okay? So the order we have is Wally. Wally was somebody who wanted to pet. Put him on a houseboat, found out he bites and scratches, and smells like sun, he didn't want to go check to throw him out into the ocean. Well, I said, no way. He back up onto the boat. We threw him off again. <laughs> no way. So we brought him to us, but he was too peopleized. And so we couldn't get him to get back wild. That's why he's with us today. So if not, again, remember our mission is rescue, recap, and release. That's one of the cases where we could not release. Okay. Right through here is our necropsy lab. The case when you get a patient that comes in that's already dead. So the faster we can find something out, the faster we can react. So this is basically animal autopsy. Okay, we're trying to build it a little bit bigger for everybody in this area. Right now, the closest one is in Gainesville, five hours away, for everybody. So if we can get this put together, not only for us, but for everybody in this area, we can find things out and work from there. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. We're going to be going right by our rescue team here. I guess these are the offices. If we uh, when we get a call, we shoot over to our ambulances and get out uh, ready to go. Okay? So we're going to kind of take a little bit of a jog and then we'll talk a little bit more there.
right over here. Um, we don't decide if they're releasable or not. That's the government. That's Wildlife Fisheries, NOAA, USDA. It's not us, okay? Because think about it. If we want to do this, we could say, we want a dolphin. Let's go grab one and say it can't be released. That's not how it works at all. We rescue a dolphin and we bring it in. They decide if it's releasable or not. If it's releasable, of course we release. If it's not releasable, they decide where it stays. So until they decide, they have to treat every animal hands off as much as possible. Keep it as wild as possible because we're going to hopefully be able to release. Um, if they can't be released, there's no guarantee it's going to stay with us either. So again, it's, it's not our choice. Nothing. It's a teenage boy. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move this way. So now, I kind of give you a heads up of what I'm going to talk about here. But on the 4th of July in 2014, we got a call about a baby dolphin at a place called Reagan TV, which is about six miles south of here. The little player, she was so small, he has made it to be about eight months old. She was so skinny, I think she had to eat it and eat. So it was really just a habit to the mother. The water in and the river was MMPL 1407. So they were calling her Nipple. She didn't like to name Nipple. But it's kind of bad luck to give them a name until they find out what's going to happen. The basic thing is, my ship goes to the river with me two and one and ten years old. Nicholas and Hope will be 10 feet long. Winter won't. 
came in with a massive shark attack when he was six weeks old. That's his baby bottle next to Hope's baby bottle. He paid 10 gallons a day. Now, what we think happened is the sharks who had separated from his mother and attacked. He was able to make it to land. He was very, very injured. We were able to keep him alive for two months, but he did end up passing away. A lot of people don't realize in the Gulf of Mexico there are three huge pods of sperm whales. There's sperm whales out there, there's orcas, the killer whales, and there's lots of giant octopuses out there. We don't realize those are all out there in the Gulf. They just don't have just little fish and tarpons and things like that. No, there's actually big, huge pods of those killer whales as well. Any questions? No? In the world, there are seven species of sea turtles. The nickname is the Volkswagens of the sea because they can get between 2,000 pounds the size of a VW bug. Okay, at 2,000 pounds, they can keep their weight in jellyfish in a day. They can dive down to 6,000 feet. They can hold their breath for 10 hours. This is Anna. Anna was only 950 pounds, only half the size that she could get. She came in with a crack crack wrap around and lift up her so bad we had to amputate. Now, we would just find one flipper missing. The problem was, in the rescue pools, she kept hitting her flipper on the side, and we were afraid she was going to injure it. So one of our volunteers made this. This is her glove. Like a mm -hmm. <laughs> It's Dior. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a thing. So, we put this down here to protect her arm and got her all healed. She was here about two years. We put the jewelry, we call it jewelry, it's the two tags and the blue white chip like they put on a dog, and we released her back onto the wall. She was gone about two and a half years, and she beached herself again. Now she had an eye condition. We brought her in, fixed her eyes up after about eight months, and we were able to release her. She was gone about a year and a half, she beached herself again. Now she had lung disease. She's been back four times. It's like she knows that she gets sick and head back to clear water. Now, she hasn't been back in about five years, so hopefully she's doing fine. Now, the thing is, remember I said they can eat their way in jellyfish in a day. Turtles love jellyfish. Problem. What does a plastic bag look like underwater? Jellyfish. They have something in their throat called esophageal pupilla. It's like, almost like little fingers. It keeps jellyfish going down. It also makes it impossible for a turtle to spit or throw up. So they started eating this plastic bag and said, hey, wait a minute, this isn't a jellyfish. Well, they're forced to keep swallowing it down. A couple of days ago, we released a turtle named Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong was this big, came in wrapped in fishing line, but also it swallowed an entire balloon in a little balloon. We'll try and show it to you with one side. Last year, we had one named Chex. Chex was this big, and swallowed an entire Mylar Happy Birthday balloon. So people let these things go, or let it go to heaven for our families, whatever, guess what? They end up in the water and they start to eat them. Okay. The other thing is, is that anybody is anybody a diver here? I'm a diver. I love to take photos in the water, but I carry three knives. The reason is because the big problem out there that we have is fishing line. You can't see it under the water. It'll cover you. Okay. And all of a sudden it'll be tangled. We we'll, we had a turtle come in the water. It was tangled in fishing line, dragging the turtle right on the fishing line. Okay. So all these kind of issues are because of people. Here. One of the biggest problems we have here is fibrocalcomas tumors. When I started here seven years ago, we had three turtles with this. Now, 95% of our turtles come in with this and diabetes. These are the ones that cut, and these are the vegetarian turtles, the lazy turtles. They eat the plants. So people that are studying with my closet seem to think it's chemicals in the water. If you look at Hawaii, for all the people who live on Hawaii, the turtles, it's a massive issue with this. When people don't live, the turtles don't have this. Now, it has a blood stop. So, when they eat, all the vitamins go to the tumors. If the tumors are on the outside, we have a 95% rescue. If it's inside, it's terminal. We use drugs like acyclovir, genazole, metronazole, lysine, lasers to remove it. Now, we have a turtle here named Harold. Harold was covered with these tumors, even on his eyes. Success story, got them all cleared up. But 
when we did a swim test, because everybody would do a swim test to make sure they're eating properly, swimming properly, so that they're going to be able to survive on the mouth before we release. He failed miserably. We put food out and he kept missing it. And we remember, hey, wait a minute, he had tumors on his eyes. So we put goggles on him. We did the test again. He failed. We did more tests, we found out his eyes were fine. But because of the tumors, it messed up the connection between his eyes and his brain. So as I see it here, his brain tells him it's over here. The other thing, he only makes left turns. He's like Blue Lander, he's not an ambi turner. He would be great at NASCAR. He just makes left hand turns. So remember our turtle named Mavis on Dolphin Tail 2? Mavis we actually released. Well, we're not gonna bring her back. Harold played the part of Mavis in Dolphin Tail 2. So he's a movie star also. This is Peter. Remember he was injured. So we started on broad spectrum antibiotics. We claimed it wouldn't be tested with bad time. We also um, um, checked the glucose, which is at 83. And we cut the line, we taped it, we moved it so we wouldn't go any further, we removed this other line. And you all asked for an x ray, correct? Here's the x ray. What do you see in the x ray? Fish hook, is it in the mouth? way down the esophagus. That means we're going to do a bronchioscope to get it out. We have to turn Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby had two hooks. It took us six hours to get them out of the room to rest when we have it released. Okay, we're going to go through this area and... Would you all like an umbrella? We're going to just shoot over that way, but... <laughs> Every time the construction is going on. Thank you. Thank you. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to build schools that are eight times the size of what we have now. Also, we're trying to get underwater viewing so it makes it easier to see, but also so we can teach. Now, we were on the way to building this. There's a little town over here. They said they want they didn't want anyone to park him over there. So they forced us to put a parking garage. That's why there's a parking garage. So now it's going to take about another two, maybe three years before we can take this. But again, we don't get any money from the movies. There's no money here. It's just the people that keep coming through. So we think the doctor couldn't do this for us. Now, we're going to see some of these cats as we go through here. Well, it's Does anybody have any food or drink on them? Okay. 
Where's my medical person here? My best friend, when I told her I'm going to show you the triage board, she said, yeah, she triage board. Then I showed her, she said, oh my god, it's a triage board. Okay, this is our rehab, this is our uh, ICU side. That's our rehab side. So you can see the turtles, they have the turtles' name, their condition, where they're located at, and so forth. Okay, so you can see Hungry Hippo and Swiss and Yara on this side, they're, they're on the quarantine side. We go by naming themes. So over here you see all these turtles with the ones we released last year. So far this year we've released 55 turtles and 5 uh, seahorses. Okay, Hello? I couldn't get these out of there, don't worry. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so we go by naming themes. So we've had Harry Potter, we've had Star Wars, we've had Star Trek, we've had rock stars, um, we've had cheeses. Okay, right now we're doing games. That's why you can see Donkey Kong, Yuker, Kerplunk. These are the turtles we have right now. So we go A, B, C, D, so forth like that. Now, look at the names. So over here we have Gryffindor. Gryffindor, ah, when Gryffindor breathes, ah, has ah, congestion ah, in the lungs. So, we had to put in a nebulizer twice a day to fix up the lungs, but we were able to rest your rehab and release. Okay. Any questions? No? This is about six and a half pounds of capelin. That's about what Hope of Winter eats in one day. Then we have Nicholas. He's our teenage boy. That little boy will eat three of those. That little boy's always hungry. Now, remember that little baby dolphin I said uh, came in? She was so skinny. You think she hadn't eaten in a week? Let me show you a picture of her. This is her. Oh, she's tiny. She's small. Okay, this is George. Remember, George was six weeks old. You can barely see him in this photo. Ten gallons of formula a day. Here you can see the shark attack. This here is Anna. Only half the size that she could get. Look at that. Now over here you can see some of our turtles. Through the window over there, that one is um, Floss in pool number two. He's from Boston. They sent us 12 turtles from over there. It was too cold, we were able to release 11 of them. This one's just not ready to go yet. Last year they sent us Alvin, Simon, and Theodore, all three we were able to release. Over here we have Euchre. Let me see him better from this side here. Euchre's 170 pounds. He's a loggerhead. He'll be 400 pounds full grown, and his head will be the size of a basketball. Over here you can see a picture of the tumors to get on the turtles. That's what the fibrocoplomus tumors look like. Okay. This one here.